We should look for a place to take shelter. I'll be fine, but we don't want you catching a cold. Albedo! We're here! Traveler, Paimon. Your faces say that perhaps you haven't turned up anything? We investigated all over the mountain, actually. But we didn't see anyone that looked like you or hear of anyone else meeting you. This is not unexpected. I haven't made much progress either. He appears to know that we are looking for him, and has opted to lie low for the time being. Still, there is one thing I found. I discovered footprints on some parts of the mountain, and although they were a little covered by the snow, I could tell they'd been left by someone of a similar size to myself. The footprints were quite numerous, so I believe my next step will be to rule out each of the adventurers active on Dragonspine, one by one. We can help with that! We have plenty of contact with the adventurers! So now we... Ah! What was that? It came from that direction. Could it be the imposter? Yes, let's hurry. was most unfortunate. What are you guys doing here? I have to agree. We've been wandering this area for days. We ran into Pallet earlier. You know, the, uh, kind of a reckless sort of guy. You know the one? Anyway, he said he was unlucky, so I gave him some adventuring survival tips. After that, he disappeared to rejoin the training camp. Wait, wait, wait! Are you saying that after all this time, you still haven't made it back to the base camp? <laughs> uh, well, as you can see... That was nothing, really. We just hit a few landslides and snowdrifts and took a few downhill tumbles. <laughs> you know the deal. They sound like unforgettable life events to me. Anyway, you're correct. We haven't made it to the base camp yet. We have had extraordinarily poor luck over the last few days. Almost as if a sinister force has been trying to thwart our every move. Fortunately, I made advance arrangements for Gerald to remain in a safe location and conduct some basic physical training exercises. I'm sorry. I'm the one to blame for all this. I've always had bad luck and it always rubs off on everyone around me. Sorry to create so much extra trouble for everyone. <sighs> I don't know what to say. Maybe this is the awesome power of fate. The scary kind, I mean. <laughs> I agree. most amazing luck ourselves. Really? I think you guys have way better luck than I do. Well... Uh, what can we do about that? Oh, Paimon knows! How about Paimon share some of her luck with you? 
you're welcome to a bit of mine too. Although if the last few days are anything to go by, it seems in pretty short supply at the moment. You guys. Aw, thanks. <sighs> With a little luck from everyone combined, we'll make it down this mountain for sure. Yeah, you bet. Let me flip a treasure hoarder insignia to test it out. All right, it's Tails, the opposite of what I guessed. So you can predict your fortune this way? But why are you so happy that you got it wrong? It has two sides, so there's a 50-50 chance of me getting it correct. Luck all comes down to probability, too. So as long as I use up all the bad luck, everything else will go smoothly. Guessing wrong when I flip an insignia is one way to use up some of the bad luck. So the probability of having some good luck in the near future just got a little higher. Hey, he's making no sense at all. Why aren't you calling him out? Guys, I guessed wrong in my insignia flip, which means we should be able to make it back to camp. Uh, Hyman's not sure that's how it works. Let me try. It's this way, right? Oh, 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 my butt. Well, what is this shard of ice doing here? What? How truly miraculous. This is a miracle of misfortune. I don't usually believe in luck, but Bennett makes the best case for it I've ever seen. Amber, if you are ever required to partner with Bennett in your future work and you encounter anything like this again, do not take any rash action. Wait for me and I will come to support you. Huh? Y yes of course now that you mention it, I do feel a little tired. Checking in the mountains has a way of wearing you out. Well, since everyone is tired, why not take a rest in my camp? I'm so sleepy. <sighs> a nice bowl of hot soup and a good sleep would sure be welcome right now. Suddenly, I'm kind of sleepy, too. Amber will fall asleep in the snow if we keep going much longer. Come on, let's move. We shall head to Albedo's camp and get some rest, take stock of our supplies, and decide how to get off this mountain. Here we are. Make yourselves comfortable. Oh, I forgot I uh, don't have that many chairs. Uh, please wait a moment. What's he doing? Painting? He is. He's painting a chair. Wait, alchemy can turn paintings into objects? How is this possible? My paintings are like blueprints. Alchemy simply enables me to omit the manufacturing part of the process. It's an elementary level technique. With enough research and experimentation, this same technique can even be used to create living beings. Whoa. Well, since you can magically produce chairs, can I have one of the backrest? No problem. How many of you want backrests? Me! 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 I'll, 
also take one with a backrest, if you please. Can Paimon have a chair that comes with a juicer? Still beats squeezing onto a stool with you. Hmm. Cool, we have chairs now. <laughs> this is so comfortable. Makes me want to stay the night here. You're very welcome to stay overnight if you wish. There's still some time before dinner. Get some rest, everyone. I'll tend the stove. Hey, now. We can't be letting you do all the work. I can help. Please, put me to work. Oh, pace yourself. Dinner could be a while. I still have a few things to prepare. I hadn't expected you to be so interested in paint. I once tried grinding mist flowers into powder and mixing it with white paint to replicate the sparkle of snowflakes. The end result was quite satisfactory, but... Works that use this kind of paint need to be stored carefully. If you want to try it for yourself, I can help you. Even now, I don't believe I have fully grasped the nature of the threat that Dragonspine poses. But I will endeavor to keep you safe. That much you can trust in. I wish I could simply respond with, I'm fine. But you are a true friend to me, so I should be honest with you. Recently, certain questions have been occupying my mind. Questions about the nature of life and creation. However, I feel that rushing into a discussion with you on these topics before my ideas on them are fully formulated will bring you far more confusion than clarity. So I will wait till my thoughts are clear in my own head before I share them with you. Until then, please forgive me. Oh, don't worry about it. A chance like this to gather around the fire and chat into the night is a rare and precious one for me. I won't participate in the conversation much, it's just a habit of mine. But please know that I am enjoying the atmosphere all the same. Of course, I'm happy to continue chatting with you if you'd like. This is my camp, but let's not get bogged down in technicalities. I want you to be able to relax and make yourself at home here. I wonder if there's anything I could do to help out. Oh, you mean Gerald? I heard that Eula developed a whole training program for him. He might be new, but I bet he'll improve pretty quickly with a mentor like that. <sighs> I feel bad. It's hard knowing that I've been causing so much trouble for everyone. Being a little unlucky is usually no big deal for me. But in a place like this, it makes me worry that something really bad might come of it. No, wait, I shouldn't have said that. I might have actually jinxed it now. <laughs> you know me, same old Bennett, unlucky as ever. But as long as bad luck doesn't break me, I'll always get back up again. Especially on a cool adventure like this one, I gotta make the most of it. <laughs> Sorry for dragging you guys into another situation. I didn't used to know any of these knights very well, but after spending some time with them on this trip, it's really opened my eyes to my own shortcomings. They're all so talented and kind. I have a lot to learn from them. Oh yeah, you gotta tell me sometime how you managed to make friends with so many talented people. Okay, cool. 
Make sure you eat plenty when dinner's ready. This is quite cozy for Dragonspine. I'm pleasantly surprised. I gave it a try, and I actually quite enjoyed it. <laughs> but Amber said the snowman I made was too artistic. Apparently, the conventional style is more rotund in appearance. I couldn't tell if she was complimenting me or mocking me. Either way, I'm not about to let it go. I'm quite familiar with Dragonspine by now. But this time, I have a newcomer to worry about. And I'm traveling in a group with Amber and the others. Not things I'm terribly well accustomed to. Still, I've taken the job, so of course I'll do what's asked of me to the fullest of my ability. I'll settle this score once this is all over. Me? I'm coping perfectly well. I don't need looking after. You should talk to Amber and Bennett. They're not as well acquainted with Dragonspine as I am. Seeing how much you can find to talk about even with Albedo, you must be quite the conversationalist. So put that skill to good use. Teach them all how to survive on Dragonspine. I'm sure this is well within your capability, no? If you're talking about Bennett's situation, I think I'm used to it now. It's hardly the end of the world. Don't ruminate on it. Take this chance to get some proper rest. The nights are long on Dragonspine. <sighs> A glass of ice-cold wine would not go amiss right now. Don't mind me. Just do whatever you like. It's so nice and warm here. Joel's been doing pretty good. Having people to play with has put him in a good mood. I'll tell you what, though. He seems to have even more stamina than me. <laughs> so long as they're playing, kids always seem to have endless amounts of energy. It's more dangerous up here than I thought. In a hostile environment like this, even a Knight of Favonius has to keep their eyes open and keep their wits about them at all times. Still, this has been a pretty unique adventure for me. It's definitely been worth it. You know, when I was keeping Joel company, I started missing my grandfather really bad. After he disappeared, I never saw him again. I have no idea how he's doing. But at least what I can do is focus on being a great outrider, if I can do that well, I know he'd be proud. Oh, all that? Uh, don't worry about it. Eula is a good person. She might not show it, but she'd never let that kind of stuff get to her. As for Bennett, he seems like the kind of guy who can keep his spirits up when things aren't going well. I feel bad having to ask so much of Albedo, though. Still, it's kind of nice to have everyone together like this, so yay for silver linings! Sure thing, bet you're tired as well. You should get some rest too. Oh, pace yourself. Dinner could be a while. I still have a few things to prepare. It's almost ready now. Traveler, please light the campfire and gather everyone for dinner. a few dishes based on some popular Mondstadt recipes. This is no good hunter, but there should be enough to go around. Please, help yourselves. Wow, smells great. Don't mind if I do. Wait, don't steal all the fried vegetables. Leave some for me. Hey! Ah, Paima, 
ones. Oh, what a great meal. Albedo, you're too modest. These dishes are as good as anything you'd find in the top restaurant. Are all alchemists so good at cooking? Hmm. You may be onto something there. Right? Paimon thinks so too. It's his lab manner that gives it away. The kind of guy who holds a potion bottle as steady as a rock isn't the kind of guy who's gonna be slapped dash with his salt and pepper. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I'm so sleepy after all that food. <sighs> Did Bennett fall asleep sitting up? <laughs> he must be totally wiped out. The way he's sleeping is so... alert. I'm impressed. <sighs> Be in a deep sleep. Oh, Pino wonders if he sleep talks. Oh, oh no, Dad, no apples for me. I want sticky honey roast and fisherman's toast. <sighs> sticky honey roast. That's your favorite, isn't it, Amber? Mmm, sure is. Give me a sticky honey roast from Good Hunter any day. I used to take Eula to Good Hunter a lot back when we first met. Before long, Sarah would start cooking our usual orders as soon as she saw us coming. She said we ordered the same thing so often that it was practically muscle memory by that point. <laughs> she also said that if everyone in Mondstadt ordered like we do, her job would be so much easier. All she'd have to do is memorize everyone's favorites. <clears throat> Always eating together. Ah, it's nice that you two are so close. The Traveler and Paimon always eat together too. It's a sure sign of true friendship. Two people simply sharing a meal says nothing either way about the relationship between them. That depends if it's a one-off meal or a regular occurrence. Aha! Paimon just noticed something! Whenever Eula doesn't want to admit to something, she raises her chin or puts her hands on her hips. <laughs> ah, you've all picked up on that. Didn't know Eula's tells were so easy to spot. We are done here, yes? I am free to go, am I not? Then please excuse me. I have a frozen lake I need to be at. You're going for an ice bath at this time of night? W wait up! Don't go without me! I thought you wanted to get some sleep. So maybe you should stay here and rest. No, I should come with you. It's late, and it's dark, and you're not good with directions like I am. Come on, let's go together. An ice bath? Whew, rather them than Paimon. So much. Roast meat. Oh, hey, Dad. I'm doing all right. I'm the leader of my own adventure team now. Wow. Benny really is a sleep talker. Okay, looks like we got some downtime now. All right, you two. Time to paint. Have you decided what to paint? <laughs> like you even need to ask. It's obviously going to be Paimon. Shh. 
sure. But we should move elsewhere. We're likely to disturb Bennett's sleep if we stay here, so let's go outside. Okie dokie! Alright, grab your easel, paper, brushes, and paints. Don't leave anything behind. Hmm. Let's paint here. Allow Paimon to adopt an elegant pose for your artistic reference. Hey! What's that look for? Cut the attitude and start putting your perfect Paimon down on the page! You better take this seriously, cause this is going on Paimon's wall! Confidence is a good thing. Those to whom it is endowed do well to flaunt it. I'm looking forward to the finished piece. Alright, let's start with the head. Now, in your mind's eye, what is written on Paimon's face? So great. Mm, now Paimon's getting nervous. Let me see. Let Paimon see. <laughs> what is this? Why do? How could? Uh, Paimon is lost for words. The brushwork is smooth, and the composition seems professional quality. You had no problems there. So what the heck happened with the face, huh? Explain that stupid expression! Explain it! Uh... <laughs> smooth... professional quality? Traveler, have you previously received any education in the fine arts? Oh, really? So it's just a hobby then? Oh, well, that sure explains a lot. There's no way you would have made Paimon look like this if you'd had any amount of formal training. Fascinating. Paimon. If this is not to your liking, I can make a few amendments. Uh, Traveler, what do you think? <sighs> All right then. Paimon, is this better? flourish to the finished piece is an essential component of what makes art... art. This is not to say that you differ from the painting on a fundamental level, rather that the real you and the you in the painting present two different styles of beauty. You remain the core reference point for the painting. So, Paimon, you can put your misgivings aside and hang this painting wherever you like. Thank 
like Salvedo. Oh, I merely added a flourish here and there. You should be thanking the Traveler. In truth, ground-up overhaul is more or less an accurate description. The more Paimon looks at it, the more she likes it. <laughs> Great! Paimon has a portrait painting! Paimon's gonna show this off to everyone! It's nothing. I can paint you next time, if you'd like. You can hang it in your home as a souvenir. I rarely entertain so many guests at my camp. It's lively. A little noisy, even. But... I don't... dislike it. Liveliness is a rare thing here on Dragonspine. Great last night. How about you guys? All rested up? I'm fine, as usual. The path down the mountain is easier to follow in the daylight. Let's take this chance to head down to the base camp. Let's go! If we make good time, maybe we can all get lunch together. I flipped another insignia just outside the camp. Wrong again. So your bad luck is all used up. We'll be down the mountain in no time. <laughs> yeah, my thoughts exactly. Today's the day. Huh? Uh, oh no, avalanche! Look out! <laughs> Uh, traveler, Paimon, are you all right? Are you hurt? Uh, Paimon's fine. Oh, that's good. My arm got a little scratched up, but it's nothing serious. I'm okay, but I don't see the other two. I'm afraid the avalanche may have pushed them off the cliff. They fell down? They'll be okay though, right? I think they're both robust enough to survive the fall. But if the falling debris knocked them unconscious, and they're lying there in the freezing cold... We have to get down there and rescue them. Immediately. Okay, let's move! Hang in there, guys. Bennett! Bennett, are you okay? Shout if you can hear me! Bennett! Uh. A voice. Over there! Bennett, is that you? Guys, I'm over here. Are you alright? Are you hurt? I... I... Let me check. Hmm... I'm a little dizzy, but I'm not in any pain. I don't think I'm injured. Thank goodness! Scared the life out of me! If you're dizzy, sit and rest for a while. Ah, uh, it's fine, really. This kind of thing happens all the time. I'll be fine. Thank you. Wait, where's Albedo? Isn't he with you guys? We thought he fell off the cliff with you! He still hasn't shown up? 
We found Bennett here, so Albedo can't be far away. Keep searching this area. Got it! sign of him? <sighs> Not a trace. Nothing from me either. Strange. We didn't have any luck either. Where could he have gone? Everyone. Nothing serious. Okay. Everyone accounted for. Guys, I... I think... It's gotta be because of me. The avalanche only happened because I'm here. I guess flipping a treasure hoarder insignia isn't gonna change my luck after all. No wonder no one wants to go adventuring with me. <sighs> I'm so sorry. Don't say that. I'm hardly the lucky type myself, so I'm not about to go blaming every little thing that goes wrong on you. Exactly. Besides, Dragonspine is a dangerous place. Avalanches literally come with the territory. Bad luck has nothing to do with it, okay? Traveler, what's wrong? Your face looks... Oh no, did you get hit on the head? Here. Everyone, the incident is behind us now. We should keep moving. Why do I feel that Dragonspine has become more dangerous than it used to be? I hope it's just my imagination. Our top priority now is to get off the mountain and regroup with the adventurers. Whatever further dangers this mountain has to throw at us, we must face them together. Agreed. Guys, keep your eyes peeled and watch your step. Careful does it. in the right direction for a good length of time now. We must be getting close. I can feel it. Victory is in sight! Hooray! As soon as we get to base camp, Paima wants a bowl of hot soup and some barbecued meat. I hope we can all get there safely. No more incidents, please. spent so much time on Dragonspine before. It sure is cold, but the view is amazing. <sighs> Isn't it, Yula? Hmm. Yula? Sorry, I wasn't listening. What did you say? I was just thinking. Whenever I've met up with you at Dragonspine in the past, we always stick to the same few spots. 
It's much more vast and beautiful here than I realized. If it were a little warmer and a little safer, I bet this place would be bustling with visitors. I agree. People are put off by the cold and have an aversion to danger. They don't realize that there is much to explore beneath the icy exterior, if you were willing to spend the time and energy. Albedo, is this the way down? Yes. I think there are several routes in this area. Mm, does the path fork off here? It looks like it does. Mm, but maybe it doesn't. My head's still a little fuzzy from the impact. I'm kind of dizzy, too. I keep thinking things are swaying a little. Uh, maybe I'm just hungry. Neither path will work for us. The smaller trail is less worn and harder to see, but it's also shorter. Since everyone is weary, I suggest we take the shortcut. Follow me. Wait. Bennett and Amber don't look well. Can we take a break? We can continue once their conditions have improved. Ugh. Now that you mention it... Huh? I... You hit your head earlier, didn't you? You, you noticed. Uh, are you sure it's worth holding everyone up over a little thing like this? No problem at all! Health and safety always come first! Okay, sorry for this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Drinking some water can help with the dizziness. Oh, and, uh, lying flat on your back helps, too. Thank you, Bennett. Seems like you really know your stuff. <laughs> well, when life gives you lemons. Bennett, weren't you feeling dizzy, too? Stop pushing yourselves, both of you. Get some rest. We'll continue when you've gathered your energy. Yula might come off as a little frosty, but she takes caring for her friends super seriously, more than anyone else I know. Every time I see that look on her face, I'm just like, ah, stop staring at me. Traveler, I know what that look means. What's on your mind? Maybe seasoned veterans have an instinct for it. I sense it too. Something seems to have changed, but I can't confirm for sure. It could be difficult to verify. It might be imprudent to speculate out loud, but I believe you know what I am referring to. <laughs> Traveler, I think... You... Thank <laughs> you. 
not over yet. Brace yourselves. This will be a challenge. Stay back! I'm going to cut this wheat down to size! Shine down! Now you shall perish! I will have order. Gather. I swear by my sword. Illusion shattered. I take it this monster is whom I had the pleasure of meeting last time. Correct. As you might have guessed, this is a mutated whopper flower. An extremely rare kind. But can whopper flowers turn into humans? Not typically, but conditions on Dragonspine are far from typical. Perhaps the dragon's blood seeped into the land, then was passed to the monsters via the ley lines, accelerating their rate of mutation. How could that happen? This mountain is home to the remains of Durin, the venomous dragon. If there is anywhere in the world one might expect life to do unfathomable things, it would most likely be here. Durin was an artificially created life form. Its existence is nothing short of a miracle, and proof of countless possibilities. In other words, this mountain we stand on is a cradle of life's profoundest mysteries. A vast and terrifying hotbed of possibilities. The avalanche. It must have been the work of this imposter. Agreed. All the other troubles you faced on the way down could also have been its handiwork. My guess is that it was targeting everyone that I've had contact with. Right, I forgot all about that. It's not inconceivable. But what was its purpose? Was it just trying to get rid of us? Hmm. I have a preliminary hypothesis on this. Whopper flowers are masters of mimicry, and those we encounter in the wild often appear in the vicinity of the plants they impersonate. In other words, the whopper flower likely has an instinct to replicate and replace. As a plant, it will disguise itself as another plant and infiltrate the group, hiding among them for cover. The plant being imitated 
has no way to detect or fight back against this behavior. But when it disguises itself as a human... It wanted to replace you and infiltrate our group? Yes. Maybe it created the avalanche to get rid of us. I predicted this eventuality, so I availed myself of the avalanche to hide and lure it out. It was watching us the whole time, and when it saw that I had disappeared, its instinct was to take my place. At that point, its disguise was complete, and its next move was to hunt its prey. Yes, that's exactly how Whopper Flowers operate. So when it approached and attacked Joel, what was that? A trial run? Perhaps. Or maybe it enjoyed posing as a human, and wanted to experience what it felt like to be human. We're fortunate to have discovered it in time. I think the Traveler was the first person other than Albedo to notice something was wrong. Traveler. How could you tell the real me and my imposter apart? I want to know too. I had no idea the other guy was an imposter. They looked exactly the same to me. I see. And it goes to show how difficult it is to impersonate a human. This mutant whopper flower tried its best to replicate the original exactly, but still managed to miss some details. Unbelievable. To think that Dragonspine creates such terrifying possibilities. Anyway, at least we won in the end. It looks like my method did work after all. <laughs> I used up all the bad luck, and the good luck finally came through! About that. If you're referring to having fallen down the mountain and avoided injury, well, that's because I was secretly protecting you. <laughs> huh? Uh, well, that still counts as good luck to me. <laughs> yes, that's not an unreasonable way of looking at it. <sighs> okay. We've been delayed long enough. Time to move on. Yeah! Let's go! Hmm. to be here. He must have headed up the mountain. Let's wait for him here. Amber, are you feeling better? Yep, all good now. Nothing to worry about. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. If not for you, I'd probably still be locked up in that cage. I really want to thank you all properly, but I can't think how at the moment. Huh? You must be pretty used to being on the receiving end of people's kindness by now, though, surely? You probably need it often enough, given your... situation. <laughs> <sighs> Come on, don't put it like that. Sure, plenty of people have shown me kindness before. But that doesn't mean I will ever take it for granted. No matter how many times people help me out in life, I will never forget any of them. Well, instead of repaying those who helped you, perhaps you could help others yourself. Everyone meets others in need from time to time. By choosing to be there for them, you're passing the kindness you received onto others. Yep, you're right. That's what I've always tried to do, and will always continue to do. <laughs> right. 
And when Cyrus gets back, I'll find some way to help him out too. <sighs> this has been quite an eventful day. Yeah, it has. It's really hit me how tired I am now that I've started to relax. <sighs> I need to rest. Everyone, please excuse me for a while. Yeah, I need to get some water and maybe a piece of fruit. Once I'm rested up, I need to get back to being an instructor again. <sighs> well, it looks like the curse of the mountaineers who couldn't get off the mountain is finally broken. Feels like an action-packed chapter has come to a close. Hmm. Shall we find somewhere to rest and chat, too? Why not? Then, please, come with me. You sent something too, didn't you? Then let's go. Huh? Are you going back to your camp again? Um, Paimon thought maybe we could talk here. Uh, okay. Might as well come with you. Good. Shall we set off right away? Sorry for bringing you back here once again. Some topics are best discussed in private. Is this about the imposter? That's right. I have to say, Traveler, I'm very surprised you noticed the difference between me and the imposter. Yes, this mark. Perhaps it's where it all began. Sounds like the beginning of a big story. Keep going! Well, I, uh, can't deny that what I'm about to say does sound like something from a children's storybook. So, what do you think this diamond-shaped mark means? Uh, a tattoo? A crest? Something else? No. Consider it a, uh... A birthmark. Have you ever seen an intricate glass ornament and wondered how it was made? Well, one method for crafting with glass is a technique known as glass blowing. Glass blowing is not a widely known art in Tevat. For this reason, glassware made in this way is usually very expensive. As the name implies, glass blowing involves blowing air into a hole. Much like blowing up a balloon. This type of glassware is known for having a pontal mark at the point where the blowpipe was inserted, where the hole was sealed at the very end. This mark is a sign that the item was crafted by a human hand. Sounds kind of amazing! It is a wondrous and beautiful art form. Alice says that these marks are seen as proof of the Maker's fine handiwork, the only flaw in an otherwise perfect work of art. My mark is something similar to this. The difference between synthetic and natural life lies in the directional flow of the life force. The energy of a natural life form flows out from within. That's why flower buds bloom and curled leaves unfold. And it's the very reason we watch in wonder at blossoming flowers. Creating life artificially, on the other hand, involves, to a certain extent, the introduction of an external source of energy into the embryonic life form. When the hole where the life force was infused is sealed at the end, it leaves a mark not dissimilar to the pontal mark in blown glasswares. The alchemical substance drips and spreads out in all directions, resulting in this rather ingenious diamond shape. Wow! So that's where it came from! This mark is a sign of my artificial origins, and proof of my imperfection as a human. I presume that the imposter intentionally avoided replicating this mark, so as not to become less than perfect himself.
You are fundamentally different from other people. I have few qualms about sharing my secrets with you. Just as Paimon said, it all sounds like a story. Even if you were to tell anyone else, they would regard it as nothing more than a tall tale. The transcendent and miraculous are not the only things to which human beings aspire. They pursue the everyday, the ordinary, to a far greater extent than I would have ever imagined. People like to believe that those who are thoroughly different from themselves could only ever exist in stories. It makes things much easier. Or, in other words, all the unfathomable things we've seen recently would make good material for a novel. I have friends who write novels. If they wrote this story, it'd probably be even more complex. Making up stories is easy. Even Paimon can do that. Oh. I didn't know you had that kind of talent. <laughs> Paimon's the best guide into that! Making up stories is a piece of cake! In that case, how about we have a storytelling contest? We can base our stories on the events of the last few days. Sounds great! Uh, but we still have to help out the Adventurers Guild. I understand. Creativity is something that cannot be rushed. Take your time, and come back when you have found some inspiration. We'll see whose story is more... compelling. Deal! Okay, we'll regroup with the Adventurer's Guild for now. Sure. My story... yes. I should have known. Master's failed specimen in the dragon's belly. This is where the story truly begins. <laughs> if we switched places, if you were the survivor, then as the abandoned experiment, the failure of the primordial human project, I'd want to replace you too. I would replicate your appearance, study your alchemy, and create miraculous life forms to divert your attention. I would wait for the right moment, then dispose of you and the Traveler, the sole person to have known your secret. And then, I could finally experience the joy of being brought into the world. Situation here seems trickier than.